Hello and welcome back to MotoGP 19. I'm back on the hunt to become Valentino Roscoe and back to my Moto2 championship. And that is how you use the word back three times in your opening sentence. If you haven't seen my championship up until now, I'll catch you up in just a moment, but the main takeaway is that I've jumped the start every race because I'm locked at manual start procedures only. And finally, here at Jerez, I remembered. I remembered to use the clutch. Having said that, I clearly need practice because I'm terrible off the line. There is obviously something I need to be doing that I'm not. Uh, but that's why I'm here, that's why I'm doing this Moto2 Championship so I can do better before I hop onto the big girls in MotoGP. So as you can see I have now dropped back to 32nd position, I didn't exactly get the best start. Having said that, I would like to point out that I don't really feel that responsible for that crash. I was caught in the pack and next thing I knew I was on my ass sliding down the road so um, I feel like that was left less of my fault than maybe that one where I just smashed into him and luckily didn't fall off. Uh, but if you haven't seen my last race at the Circuit of the Americas, what I was saying is that despite another really awful start with a bunch of crashes, uh, I, I sort of found myself with a bit of time, I was off stream so no distractions, I wasn't reading chat, and I found myself actually focusing on riding the bike and how to do it properly and something actually just clicked in my brain. I, I went from just being all at sea and just button mashing to actually getting a decent feel for the bike, how to apply the brakes, how to apply the throttle, and uh, and the pace and the consistency immediately started to come to me. Now I did this Jerez race directly after that Circuit of the Americas, carried the momentum forward, and the second I hit the ground here, I hit the ground running. I got into practice, I was immediately top of the timesheets. Uh, I was fast, I was consistent, clean, no crashes whatsoever. I did the three development tasks that the team requires of you, absolutely smashed them, no worries in the world, did them all first try, uh, got myself in quality and slotted it on pole by three full seconds. So that is something that uh, I will touch on again, but yeah, three full seconds in front of the AI uh, and you can see by the way I'm carving up the field and absolutely blasted my way through to the front that something has clicked. I am a different rider from how I was at the start of the Circuit of the Americas race. Uh, I very quickly caught up to this mob which is 6th all the way through to 3rd and I think 3rd position is really the first guy that I started to struggle with uh, on pace. I'm going to cut a big chunk of this section out because the last half a dozen laps, the last half of this race were an absolutely titanic tussle with the riders and the reason that's possible is because as I alluded to before the AI were 3 seconds slower than me in qualifying but in the race there wasn't much in it. Now Fair enough, uh, I did choose a soft front, a medium compound rear tyre, and I did have to worry a little bit about tyre wear and not pushing too hard, but nonetheless, I think I did a 145.8 in qualifying to get pole position. Now, second place was a 148.1, .1, so not actually three seconds, but still a huge margin, and the stupid thing was that once we got to the actual race, as you'll see a little bit later on when I catch up to first and second, uh, they are going much faster, like I'm doing 146s, I think I just did a 146.2 as I crossed the line then. Now granted I am slowly catching up to uh, Baudasari and the top two as well, but um, nonetheless, the fact that I was doing 46s and 47s, I'll try and keep an eye on lap times, uh, but that was at the end of the race on worn tyres as well, you would expect them to be at least a second and a half slower at the end of a race with tyre wear on than their qualifying time. Um, not the case, so a bit of a game bug, bit of an issue there uh, that, that probably should be addressed and hopefully is patched at some point. But I'm going to skip ahead because all I really did over the last three or four laps or so was uh, put my head down and really push hard, setting really good lap times uh, consistently in the 46s to catch up to these two. Now, now that I got here, I kind of thought, well, I'm only on lap 6 of 12, so, um, you know, I'm going to smash past these guys. I'm obviously in good form. I'm obviously fast. Uh, but I was very pleasantly surprised at the ridiculous amount of fight these guys had in them. I couldn't rip past. I mean, you saw a little bit with Baudasari. I was stuck behind him for a little while. But with these guys, I showed him a nose here, assumed that was me run and done. Uh, and he, uh, he really did try to fight back hard. So I finally got my way up to second position on lap 7 of 12 and uh, I actually had to sit behind him for a, a lap or so, a solid lap or two to try and figure out where he was a little bit slower 
and that was quite cool. That's a bit like real life. You can't just fly past someone. You have to sit behind them and, and figure out where their weak spots are. You can see some nice defending by first position there into the final turn. And uh, their aggression, I think, felt really good to me. They defended their line. They were aware of my presence. And they weren't afraid to shove it back up the inside once I got past. As you will see, this battle was titanic. So I finally made my move on exactly the same corner that I took second position. And, uh, and assume that was about it. I thought, I finally got past. It's actually taken a little while. You'll see I'm on lap eight now. So I took a few laps again of just studying his moves, getting my lines right, and making sure I had everything spot on. Um, but the fight doesn't end there. As you can see, a huge dive bomb. And he actually made a little bit of contact with me. I bounced off the outside of him, and I've had to retake second position. So it was a massive lunge by him. Not totally ridiculous, though. He didn't just ride into the side of me. It was a legitimate Moto 2. If anyone's ever watched Moto 2, you'll know how aggressive some of the overtakes are, and Moto 3 for that matter. And damn, these days even Moto GP. And that was really uh, straight out of the textbook of real life. It was kind of cool. And this race went from kind of being me at the start assuming I was going to smash her and, and take an easy win, given how fast I was. I'm, I'm sort of glad I dropped back at the start of the race so that I could fight my way back through and have these battles. And I had such a good time with this. This battle is still on to see if I can even get first. And this is about the time I started thinking, well, maybe first is not a given. You know, I'm setting good lap times. He's coming with me. He's shadowing me. Uh, granted, the lap times have dropped a bit there into a 148.0, but obviously there's a little bit of contact and running wide. Um, just variance in, in different speeds. You can see I was a little bit later on the brakes there. He powered on the way out. So this battle was right on. Don't for a second think this was easy. I had an absolute blast. This is the most fun uh, I've had in a MotoGP game for a long time. I always remember the AI being terrible. And uh, maybe just because I'm still fresh and learning this, uh, the AI is actually only on 90. I think you can go up to 120. So there's plenty left to add in. But I just felt like they had the aggression dialed in really well. And I had a really great race. Not something I actually expected to do in this championship. Excellent run out of there. You can see I've got up alongside him. But as my bike runs out of pace, it is only the starter bike. Yet again, excellent on the brakes by first. And I've had to tuck in behind him. You can tell at this point I actually don't know how to pronounce his name, can't you? I know a lot of the Moto2 riders, but I don't really... I haven't watched that much. So I'm just going to continue to call him first until I figure out how to say his name. Um, but yeah, excellent defending, and uh, and I'm working for it. Suddenly it's lap nine, and I'm thinking, damn, like I have to get this move done, and then I have to put my head down. My tyres are starting to wear, and once they get below 50%, they really do start to struggle. You don't have to get them all the way down. It's not like Gran Turismo where they're decent until you're right at the bottom of it. From what I've felt, below 50%, they get really, really difficult. So I'm pushing as hard as I can, uh, starting to worry about the laps, Teeing up a move on the outside. You can see how hard I was on the throttle there. The bike squirming around. And he's gone super deep under brakes again. Look, I, I'm sorting my braking out. Again, something I mentioned at Kota. I am getting it sorted, but I am still not up to scratch with the AI. So I'm going to keep working on that. Um, but it feels nice. This is supposed to be a development series. And I feel like I am actually developing. I'm having to learn. And that's the right way to do it. That's how they do it in real life. That's why these championships exist so that people can practice, get better, and hopefully by the time I get to MotoGP I can crank the AI difficulty a bit and really enjoy the season with some tough battles and know that I'm competent, or at least more competent, and I can practice and work my way through. So on to lap 10 now, I decided to tee up exactly the same move as last time, had to roll out of it uh, just too late on the brakes, something I couldn't compete with, which again was nice, you can see that back tyre really squirming, I was trying to get on the gas as hard as I could to get a good run onto the straight, which I managed to do. Of course, the question is, is he going to go the dive bomb back up the inside? I've actually managed to keep him to the outside. Fortunately for me, I've run a bit wide, but my strength is the exit of the turns, and I have finally, finally done it. So at this point, you can see how squirmy that rear tyre is getting. It's down around about 50% now. The heat is starting to go up. It's currently yellow, uh, and that does actually increase. It goes right through to... Um, red like the temperature of the rear tire really starts to pick up as, a, as the wear increases but I just wanted to push ahead at this point and I kind of thought you know what I've, I've broken him a little bit here I've just pulled away almost out to a second at this point so I'll jump ahead to the final lap and uh, 
surprisingly, even though I was pushing on as hard as I possibly could for the final couple of laps, I was really surprised to see how... You could see him there in the camera. That's how close he was. And this back tyre, by the way, was absolute jelly at this point. If I had to do another two laps, I'd have high-sided it. That whole way through the last lap, it was squirming and flicking out everywhere. Uh, anyway, if you couldn't tell from the tone in my voice, very, very happy to get my first win. But on top of that, it was an awesome race. I thoroughly loved that. I sat back and just went, man, that was... That was cool. That was actually a great race. It's not what I expected. I kind of thought it'd just be a dirty old grind as I got used to the bike, tried to get some results, and then through to MotoGP. This was fun, and I really hope that some of the other battles, uh, some of the other races in the season are as fun as this, because that was, that was freaking awesome, and also very happy to get my first win. That was a perfect weekend for me. I got all three development uh, tasks completed. I got pole position, and I got... Um, and I got the win here as well. So it catapulted me up into the top 10 for the championship. A lot of work to do the first three rounds, obviously. Really, really rough. Again, I'll leave the link to the stream and my last video in the description of this. I do hope you'll go and check those out. Um, let me know that you're enjoying this series because I want to keep watching on. But I'm not going to jump away from this video yet until we've had a good look at the podium. So let's see how we go. Yeah, so a magnificent win. Look, I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do leave it a like. Hit subscribe if you're new to my channel. Remember to hit the bell icon if you do as well. And I can't wait to talk to you all next time. But for now, it's goodbye.